Hi, and welcome to Dev Days for NSO. My name is Hank Preston, and I'm a principal engineer with learning and certifications, and we use NSO inside of our production data centers to manage the resources that bring you all of the Cisco certification classes. In my talk today, we're gonna to look at how we can use PyETS to bring health checks and verifications to our services. For our agenda today, we'll start out with a quick look at why we might wanna put health checks into our services, and then if PyETS is something you're not familiar with, we'll give you a quick introduction to what PyETS is. And then we'll spend the majority of our talk looking at how we can add PyETS into our actions. So why health checks for services? Here we can see one of my favorite network engineers, Carl, and he is trying to add a new switch pair to his data center using NSO. NSO can very easily render those switch configurations. It can e easily, very easily, push those configurations into the network. However, things get a little wonky when Carl wants to find out, did those switches perform or form a healthy pair? Or are the links from all of those switches up to the rest of the network? These are questions that NSO struggles a little bit if all you're focused on is the configuration management aspect to your services. This is why health checks are important being able to answer, is your network actually operating the way you expect it to, not just did we push the configurations out? So what is PyATS? PyATS is a library and ecosystem of tools that were developed by Cisco internally to make automation of network tests easy. It was originally developed to help the, op, the uh, software developers inside of Cisco who are writing iOS, XE, NXOS, and XR test code releases before they're released out to CCO for all of our customers to use. So when they fix a bug or add a new feature to something like BGP or OSPF, PyATS has been used for years inside of Cisco to make sure that those features work successfully. A few years ago, it was released via DevNet under the Apache license version two for all of our customers, partners, and students to also write and execute excellent network tests in an automated fashion. Now, as an ecosystem, PyETS is made up of a few different parts. Starting at the top of the pyramid, we have the ability to integrate into other parts of our network automation tooling. Maybe you're using Ansible or Robot as part of your configuration or testing of your network. PyETS can be integrated directly into those tools. Maybe you're using CICD to test the verifications of your service code as you're writing it. Well, you can integrate directly into Jenkins or other CICD tools. PyETS even includes a centralized dashboard for managing all of your tests, logs, reports, who's allowed to run tests, which tests can run simultaneously, and that's called Expresso. Now, the real meat of what PyATS offers, at least in my opinion, is the library of parsers, models, triggers, and verifications that are often referred to as the Genie Library. A PyATS parser allows an engineer to take a commonly used show command, like show IP interfaces, and immediately convert that directly into a Python object that is easy to work with in an automated fashion. Or maybe you don't wanna work just with individual show commands. You wanna talk about entire protocols or features. That's what the models are for. I can do something like learn everything about routing all at once in a platform and version agnostic fashion. That's what a model's for. And as you become more robust and you wanna do things to your network, like remove the configuration for BGP and then put it back and see if your network behaved as expected, Triggers and verifications can help you with that. Now, all of these elements of the PyATS library are built using the framework that's also included in PyATS. And so if you wanna build your own parsers, models, triggers, or verifications, you can use this framework to add back into the tool. And because it's open source, we encourage everybody to contribute back into the tool with pull requests up on GitHub. Now, the foundation of the PyETS ecosystem is the core test infrastructure. This provides the topology capability to describe what your network looks like, how to connect to those devices, how those devices are interconnected. It also provides the automated test framework to write very complex, multi-step dependent tests, gather the results of those tests into easy to use logs and reports 
that can be compared from one run to another. That's also part of the test infrastructure engine. Now, if you want to learn more about PyETS, we got another slide here first. Here we can see a parser in action. I'm using PyETS parse to show IP interfaces. And then without having to do any regex, I can take all of that output that comes back from the switch and convert it into Python objects, which here we see rendered as JSON. Now, if we want to go above the CLI command level to those features or protocols, I've got PyETS learn routing, which will create an agnostic instance of all of the routing details, no matter what the protocols are, static or dynamic, and again, turn it into a Python object that we can turn into JSON like this example. From our text test execution engine, here we can see the output from running a sample job. We can see each of the tasks that have passed, reports are generated, all the output is gathered for you to use. Now, if you want to learn more about PyATS, I've collected a handful of links here that'll take you directly into the documentation, and there's more at the end as well. Now let's look at using PyATS inside of our NSO actions. Now our example verification for this presentation is I want to know, are all of my inter-switch links healthy? What that means to me is, do all of the expected port channels exist on my network, and are there any unexpected port channels? My NSO service should be driving all of the port channel creation. I want to make sure that's all that's there. Then I want to know, are all of the member interfaces for those port channels correct? If a port channel should have two interfaces, does it actually have two? And then finally, are all of those interfaces in an up state? This is my definition of healthy for this example. Now, there are five steps that we have to walk through to add these into our actions. First up, we need to expand our Yang model for the service with the action definition. Then inside of Python, we'll create our PyETS testbed object that provides the details for each one of the devices that is relevant for my test. This will come out of the NSO CDB. With the testbed created, I can then use the models and parsers to retrieve the current operational status, which I will then verify against what my expected status is based on my service. Finally, I want to be able to render that output as a result or render the results as an output to my action so users know how things went. Let's walk through each one of these five steps and see how this looks inside of the code for the service. First up is the manipulation of our Yang model. Now, actions are part of the Yang version 1.1, and you have to explicitly state that your module is using Yang version 1.1, otherwise it'll uh, revert back to 1.0, and the, the standard action doesn't exist. Now, just like we had service points for creating our service creation code, we have the TLF action point that allows us to link the Yang model, highlighted there in green, down to the actual Python code, where we register the action using the same name from the module. And down at the bottom in the, the teal color there, we can see the Python code where we link these two things together. Now, each action can have optional inputs and outputs. Highlighted in purple, you can see that I have three outputs to this action. First, a basic success flag, true or false. Then a simple message that indicates the overall status of my test. And then finally, a list of potential errors that happen during the execution of the test, should we want to dive deeper into those results. Next up is the testbed creation. Now, the testbed is the inventory file for PyETS. If you've worked with other network automation tools like Ansible, you're probably familiar with the concept of an inventory file. Now, typically, the inventory file or testbed is a standalone YAML file that would be read in during the beginning phases of your Python or your PyATS jobs and scripts. However, we can create a testbed dynamically using Python. Here we can see highlighted in green where we've got the basic framework for a testbed definition. Now, what we need to do is we need to add each one of the devices into the testbed. And we'll do that by looping over the list of devices that are make up our service. So highlighted in yellow at the top, you can see that I'm going into my service definition and then just grabbing each one of the devices so that I can pass that into this create testbed function. 
Now, the specific definition for each one of the devices needs to be created to map to the uh, PyETS schema for a test bed. And so we have a separate function that does that. And you can see that we're calling that down here in the teal. If we look at that function, now we can see how we can pull all of the details from within NSO, because NSO already knows how to connect to and talk to our devices. And so we pull that information to render the device data for this test bed. Some of the pieces of information are easily. For example, authentication, we can learn that just by looking at the auth group attached to a device. The address is just what device address we're using for NSO to talk to it. The operating system is a little bit tougher. PyETS has a list of keywords that it uses to identify what type of device it's talking to. NSO has the platform that it learns when it uses the NED to talk to a device. And so I created a simple map that takes it from one to the other on that side. All of those details will create the device data that can be returned back from this function and put into the test bed that can be used by our action. With our test bed created, now we can begin to look up the operational status from our network. We start out by connecting to the devices in the test bed, and PyETS gives us a very simple function to do that. Testbed.connect will allow us to do that. Then we can take each one of the show commands or the models that we want to learn and parse that out and store it as a Python object. In our uh, example down here, we can see the switch.parse command, which is how we access the parse function. The teal is where we send in the command, and then we'll store that as the Python object show port channel summary. Here we can see what's actually stored inside of Python for one of these definitions. And within this output from the command rendered into Python, we can see all of the details necessary to run those four operational verification checks that we talked about. What are the port channel members? What are their state? And so on. With that data in place, now we can start to do the verifications. First up, is the set of port channels ex that exist the ones that we expect? And this allows me to use one of my favorite Python tools for this type of testing, set math. We'll use the ability to look for differences between two different sets shown there in green to identify whether we have the port channels that we're after or if we have any missing or extra ones. To do that, we need to create the sets for comparison, and I create two. The first one is the set of port channels that are based on the configuration of our service. So what are the port channels that were defined? The second one is the set of port channels that we learned by running the command against our device to get the operational state. With those sets created and the set math completed, then we can do our comparisons highlighted in teal there to figure out whether we have any missing or extra port channels. And if we do, we'll save those results for reporting at the end of the verification run. Our next verification looks at the member interfaces. Do the member interfaces for each of the port channels match, again, what is expected based on the service definition? This allows me to use one of my other favorite Python tools, list comprehensions. Highlighted in yellow, we can see that we're going into the actual service definition once again and creating a list of the member interfaces that should be uh, a part of each one of these port channels. With that done, then I can do another bit of set math or set comparisons to see if the set of operational port channel members actually matches the set of member interfaces that we expect based on configuration. If they don't match, again, we can gain some information about the state and report that as an error. Now in the middle, highlighted in green, we're checking for an expected exception on the off chance we actually expect to see a port channel, but that port channel doesn't return any operational data. That would return a key error exception in Python, and so that'll tell me that a port channel that I expect to exist isn't actually operational, another good piece of information to have. Finally, our verification is, are all of those member interfaces in an up state as expected? Now that uh, show port channel summary command that we ran has all of the details necessary to answer this question. And so we'll simply check, does the flag match our expected state of an uppercase P to indicate that everything is good? If it doesn't equal that, we will once again record that error so that we can report it back. 
Here, we gather all of the output and information from all of our tests to render the action output to the user. Now, the action output variable is used to control the success and message as well as the errors. And every step along the way in a verification, if we found an error, something that didn't pass as expected, we created another error object and put it into the list. And then at the very end of all the verifications, we look, do we have any errors? If so, we set our success and message appropriately. Now we've gone through a little bit of code review. You've seen kind of what it looks like under the hood. Let's see it in action in a bit of a demonstration. Now our first demonstration here, we'll check to see it when everything was healthy. And so highlighted in yellow, you can see that the success comes back in true and the message of fabric test was successful is returned. Everything is in good shape. But in the second example, I went ahead and I actually shut down an interface on one of the devices. And so now when we run network fabric, dev01 test fabric, we get success false, and then errors were encountered during the test, as well as the three specific errors that were found. On one of my VPC pairs, specifically the distribution pair, distribution switch 02 has VPC 103, which is also port channel 103 in a down state, because interface Ethernet 1.4 is not up. Now, if we look at the third error, we can see this is where the specific switch where I shut down an interface also shows that interface Ethernet 1.2 is not up and it has a flag of D showing that it's down. Now, this output is what the users see when they run the action. As a developer, you can look into the Python logs to get even more information. Every test run along the way is logged into the Python log as well as the results. And you can see here the three false success messages for the three errors that happen. And then at the bottom, I put in a successful test so that you can see that successes are also logged into the log. Now running tests and actions like this from NCSCLI is great, but what if you wanna integrate this type of verification into a northbound system, another operational tool? We use Zabbix to do all of our monitoring and alerting. And so API calls like this RESTConf call allow us to run this action against our NSO piece, gather the details back in a nice operational format that our tool like Zabbix can read through, look for the success message of faults, print out a general error, or even give the details of exactly what was wrong when this verification was ran. All done through the APIs for our action. Now in closing, I am certainly not done in my journey using PyATS as part of my actions and verifications. A couple of enhancements that I'm considering looking into is rather than using PyATS and the, uh, the test or the PyATS core capability to communicate with devices, maybe use the NSO CLI uh, integration to send those commands instead. So NSO can use live status to send CLI commands and gather output and so I could use that as maybe an enhancement and then still use the PyATS parsers and models to parse through that. Now, my verifications today, I'm not using the AE test framework to, uh, to write the robust tests, but there's probably some value that could be gotten from that as well. If you're looking for more information about my presentation or PyATS in general, I've again gathered some resources here. Now, during the session today, we just looked at a handful of parts of the code from the model and the Python used to create this action. I've published the full package in its current development state up on GitHub if you want to look at everything um, end to end. And you can find the Yang model action code as well as some helper functions that I wrote. If you've got any more questions, please stay in touch. I've put my contact information here, but we also have live Q&A at the end of today's uh, uh, sessions with all of the speakers. So please provide your questions in the chat and we'll tackle as many of those as we can at the end of today's session. With that, thank you so much for joining me for my talk and I look forward to talking to all of you more in a little bit.